What I'm going to talk about is myself, community development, a technical problem that I had at hand, and the lessons that I should have learned from it. And I called it a deep dive in the rocks. Well, not sure if it's appropriate, but. I am uh, Daan Hoogland. I work at Schubert Phyllis for uh, a year and seven months. I don't know why I put 1.8, but it seems all right. <laughs> I am a triathlete, a coach, a juror. Uh, this is some uh, information about me. The Twitter handle is not my Twitter handle, I found out. Uh, I don't use it very often. It's actually my Skype handle. So uh, Google Plus is useful for me, mostly. And these are, this is the greatest race I ever did. It's in Norway. And now I'll talk to you about it offline. Some advice. This talk is mainly about community. I'm going to talk about some technical issues slightly, but that's not the point of the talk. Uh, it's mainly interested to, interesting to, to starters, at, uh, at uh, people who want to con contribute, who are not used to contributing to open source, like I wasn't. It might be interesting for the, for the gurus, I'm not sure. So, how to get involved? I started out at Schuberg um, a year and seven months ago, but I started out at CloudStack uh, just under a year ago. I uh, have some other responsibilities, and I got an uh, assignment to work on. Uh, I, I was working with Hugo, one of uh, what I consider the gurus. So I had to be at up a certain standard to, to get accepted and, and to, to, to be, uh, sorry, my English is failing here, uh, to, to be um, recognized as, as someone that could actually contribute. Um, what, I try, what I'm trying to say here today is that Having yourself accepted in a community is quite similar to having your patch accepted by a big open source project. And, um, well, hopefully I'll show that adequately. And I'll show you what pitfalls you have and what not to do. Um, and to how to become the outsider. Well, one thing is pick a great refactoring job. Uh, uh, and do it all at once. Don't hesitate to grab, uh, have a grab at all the uh, sides of the system. And, uh, well, I, I see some recognizing laughs there, so we all know what, what can happen. Um, it's quite similar to go, coming into a group and saying, well, I am the expert. I can tell you what to do and how to do it. Uh, this here is a line which is hardly readable. I can show you right here. There's a six-digit number. That's the uh, size of the patch that I contributed as my first major patch. And I kind of regret that. Um, I managed to split out some parts, but it was quite hard to do that. To that, do that. And um, I should have been going at it totally differently. There were some troubles with that. Uh, there were some reasons that I couldn't, but I'll um, get into that. Um, this is, I said, about the size. This uh, patch I had to port backwards and forwards through the system, uh, through the branches. Initially, I made a patch on the 411 branch, of which we had a custom uh, uh, implementation at our site. Um, then I had to port it to master, which at that time was still 4.2. Uh, 
uh, but I wasn't in, it wasn't accepted in time, so I had to port it back to our custom version of 4.2. First 4.2.0, then 4.2.1. And then finally I got it, and it's now in 4.3, happily sitting there, waiting to be used by all of us. I don't think there's any other users than Schuberg, by the way, at this moment. So how, how do you contribute? Um, I made a little list and I put code in there a lot, but that's of course not all of it. And um, it is what has to be accepted. It's not how you get yourself accepted, by the way, by just submitting code and get it reviewed. You'll have to talk a lot to people about your code. So these are the other things that are very important. Mail about your, what you're gonna do. Mail at several uh, uh, levels. I'm gonna do this in the far future, but now I wanna do this to make it possible. Um, there's a review board that we use at Apache. It's not ideal. It's a, it's a slow process. You need to make your patch available at the review board. You meet, need to then uh, contact people. Uh, uh, there's a lot of hassle around it. A lot of people at Citrix, they like to have JIRA tickets, and maybe rightfully so. So there's another uh, bunch of things you need to do before you get your code accepted. And um, do them, by the way. Uh, it's easier for yourself to keep track and it's also easier for others to, to know what you're working on, to know how, not, how to prevent double work. Because that's another thing that might happen, of course, if you, if you go into a room, and I see it happen at, as we speak, people are at their company, they're making a nice feature and they're hardly communicating about it, it's hard to keep track about who is working on what, and you want to make sure that people talk to each other so that they are not making conflicting things and they're not doing the same thing over. So, Schubert, they had a trick with uh, CloudSec 4. Uh, Schubert uses NYSERA uh, software-defined networking uh, I think it's NVP, uh, VMware MVP nowadays. Uh, this is how they did it in uh, CloudSec. These are several VPCs that you see. Uh, they belong to one customer. They're, for instance, different uh, uh, stages in an, in an OTAP street. Uh, DTAP street is the English. Um, and they need to be connected. The only way to do this via the private gateways if you don't want to go through the public network is to connect them on VLANs, have the VLANs uh, then hacked on the hypervisor into a L switch, a Nisira identifier for the network, connect the L switches to a virtual router that you deployed separately, and have the routing to all the uh, networks back on that virtual router, and you need to manage that. A lot of work. So rightfully, people wanted, at Schuberg wanted this hacked into something more usable, and they so requested. This is sales, sorry. Um, so the question is, make sure that, that Hugo's code is being leveraged for these private gateways so that we can easily provision our, uh, our gateways from VPC to VPC for a customer. And that's what I hacked at for a long while. So this is how it should look once done. Next time I'm not going to use this format, it's not very useful. 
This is a API as it was for creating a, a VPC private gateway. That's a that's all the all the uh, data that you need to create one is in there, except that it will only work with VLANs and not as you can see as I try to do there with an L switch. So I changed the API to accept the L switch, but then I found that uh, there were uh, some things in the system that wouldn't allow me to. One thing is that uh, the VLAN and the VLAN ID are all over the network part of the system. So that's how I got to touch over 50 files with little changes here and there, parsing a, an uh, integer from a string and doing nothing else on the other hand, accepting maybe a URL and um, in the new code, of course, accepting a URI, which had a slightly different format. The URL would be, uh, as you see at the bottom, VLAN colon slash slash some VLAN ID, but it would be completely equal for the logic in the system to just the, uh, the VLAN ID. So the question was, and I have chosen for the enum uh, solution, and I think we need to change that in the future. Um, how, how are you going to distinct between the two? What is now in the system is an enum which specifies which type of uh, isolation method you use, and this feeling needs to be edit, edited, the, the, this, this, sorry, this enum needs to be edited in the core of the system for any network plugin that is added. Hence making the word plugin maybe a little overstated. I went for the enum type, but, but as I said, the code needs revisiting. This I shouldn't have in there. Um, this is a problem because uh, the, the, if you look at the different broadcast or is isolation types that we have, they have uh, uh, completely different formats. So I made a lot of backwards incompatible changes for which I only found out after, for instance, Alina from Cheatsex complained to me, hey, revert your code because it's not good. Um, in the end, while the code was working, by the way, in our site and functioning greatly, I started hacking at this enum to make sure that all uh, broadcast URIs would be backwards compatible. And I submitted that patch. And it was accepted, and it was great, and it was very small. And I, well, I'll get to the conclusion of that later. There's a, 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 a bunch of SDN types, and they were added over the past year mostly. Uh, the, I think Nisira was a year and a half ago, but after that came Midonet, and now there's VXLAN, and there's Open vSwitch, and all of them are in this enum, and there's, they are recognized. By their, by their individual uh, identifier, and this identifier, this enum has, has a bunch of uh, functions to do the parsing or do the generating of the, uh, of the URI belonging to that type of, uh, of uh, uh, isolation type. So this was, this was actually one thing that I could easily uh, have done separately. But the use of it couldn't. Um, throughout the system, there is VLAN, VLAN ID, uh, 
VLAN number, VLAN URI, broadcast domain URI, broadcast domain ID, and there's also isolation type, isolation ID, and somehow these are somewhat different, but I don't know the difference, and I think we should get rid of them unless someone knows what the difference is and, and can explain it, and we can hack them back into the proper way so that at certain points a VLAN, a broadcast URI is no longer uh, assigned to an isolation uh, type. It happens in the system. A lot of what I did was actually this. I decided that it was not a good idea to have get VLAN ID for other types of broadcast uh, domain types. So a lot of the 300K change that I submitted was uh, just changing names. And these names were all over the system. And actually, the changing of this name should have been a separate patch. I didn't do that. But I now know it should have been a separate patch. Right, this one I told you about. Here is the code. It's hard to read, but what it actually said is set isolation type URI and set broadcast type URI, and both are set to the parsing of IP.get broadcast domain URI, and then to URI for the type isolation type dot VLAN. Well, this code needs revisiting, as I told you. But I didn't get around that. Another part what uh, I did at a, lot, at a lot of places is replacing this parsing of a long from something that is a string. But assumptions were made that this string would only contain the ID. And at other places, assumptions would be made that this string would be of the form VLAN colon slash slash et cetera. And it was hard to find the people who knew and who knew why. So there are some things to do, as I explained, uh, which are not the essence of this talk. As they're shown here. Um, my conclusions, and now I've got a slide that it's nice, but I don't know why I put it in there. It's not, not. Well, actually, I, I think I show here that some other guy than Dan Hoogland at SchubertVillers.com worked on it, and that's me, Dan, but it's just a funny slide. So you can introduce yourself, as, as I said, with one big thing in one go. And I know there's other people who did that. I won't mention your name, Mike. Um, I, actually, Mike and I had the, had the same experience. We did a lot of work on one big uh, uh, issue. And by the time we finally got to the stage that a review would, would be accepted, we were both committed and we wouldn't actually need it anymore, but the review is useful anyhow. So I still like to re uh, submit my code for review, um, at least if it's bigger than just changing the way an exception is called or whatever small things you can think of. Um, as I said, you need to talk about what you're going to do a lot. And Citrix called it making FS. Uh, in this case, it's hardly functional. I, I mean, the functional change that I made is tiny. It's really nothing. There's a, there's a feature called a private gateway. It's there. You can plug it to networks. It's there. Uh, there's Nisira networks. There were there. I just need to plug this Nisira network. That's the whole functional specification. But the functional specification is useful also for discussion about 
technical implications about it. So use it. Now, what we don't have at Apache uh, at the moment, what we don't have at CloudSec at the moment is a, a convenient way for contributors, and we need to work on that, and we are working on it. Actually, Sebastian uh, uh, changed the, the process for the documentation in a very, very convenient way. But we need to make this more convenient so that someone who is not a committer and I think I recognize people from uh, SunGuard. Um, at least they used to have a very important committer. Uh, he just resigned as VP. But nowadays they're working a lot on, on CloudStack and they don't have any representative in, in, in the community other than through the mailing list. So for them it would be very useful to have a, uh, a GitHub pool mechanism in which they can, can easily demonstrate their code. And uh, we are thinking about it and we are talking about it. Both Mark and I worked so hard on our patches that we're now in the PMC and we will talk about these issues. Um, of course, there's other ways than GitHub, there's Gerrit, and uh, maybe we can improve on the review board. But for now, we'll have to do with it. So I talked about uh, uh, introducing yourself in a community and introducing your patch in a community. So I need to tell you in what way I think they're similar. Uh, what, what, what did I think about what I did and what I delivered? Well, if you are a person and you want to introduce yourself to a community, you want to uh, uh, show that you can do something and do it right and then when you're done you go on to the next thing and you don't say I can do it all and then do a lot of things half. It happens. Same for a patch, you, you try to cut it in little pieces, explain what it's for and, and get it into the community, get it accepted and in that way you go towards the end goal of the big feature even though it's a tiny functional feature. Uh, that, that's some, some thing I don't think I wrote there. That's if you're in a company with other people in the community, you have a layered community around you. Try to reach out to the bigger community. Try to be as much communicating with the people outside your communi community, your smaller community as you can. Don't stay in the company. Don't ask too many questions in the company and if you do, Try to ask questions in your company on the public mailing list. Because however stupid they may seem, they might be useful to others. And communicate both the intermediate goal and the end goal. I kind of put that like, uh, be true to your ideals, but be pr pragmatic about them. You have to uh, be able to, to have an, have an end vision, but, but still do the practical work that you need to do now and not try to do, reach your end goal, goal today. Um, if you do a proposal on the mailing list, well, the first free post that I did on the mailing list, I got no answer. And um, that doesn't mean that people don't want your proposal. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It could mean that it's bad, but it actually only means that people don't answer. They don't have the time, and it, they might actually think that it's good. And, uh, well, if I apply that to a human being, you're all welcome. I am welcome. I didn't always feel welcome, and I was wrong not feeling welcome. I know that now. Uh, don't break other codes. Be backwards compatible. And as the human variety to that, you are right, and that doesn't mean that others are wrong, however right you are. I think I have five minutes, but um, I forgot a lot of, uh, uh, one thing to say. You can put questions intermediate, and I don't have a slide that says question mark or questions. And 
That's it. Are there any questions, even though you forgot to post them? Yes, I have considered that. Repeat uh, the question, please. The, the question is, when you implemented this for the NICERA networks, did you consider making it more generic so that other SDN implementations might be used? Uh, I have considered it, and I've uh, uh, taken it into account in my design, but I haven't implemented it. But, but the architecture design is... It's, uh, it, it can be adjusted to suit more types of SDN. Yes. We need work for that, but it, yeah. I have actually talked about that as well a bit, but the response weren't very big. I don't think anybody but Schubert uses this feature, by the way. And uh, I talked to Said Ahmed yesterday. He is implementing a UI for a feature that he made because he said, otherwise nobody's going to use it. Now my prime objective is not to make everybody use it, but I'll need to do something like that if it's going to be more generic uh, in use by others. Okay, no one else? Thank you.